Hi boys and girls, we are now starting module 8, understand multiplication of fractions. We're not going to do page 179, we're just going to go straight to page 180, the are you ready? Uh, you guys are familiar with this page on here, you're just going to go ahead and fill out the different sections to recall information from the past. The first section is multiplication facts, so you should know your times tables and be able to how to answer them. Um, here when we're multiplying a fraction by a whole number, think about this as how we would when we would do... 3 times 5, for example. When we do 3 times 5, we're saying, okay, I have 5 groups of 3. So if 1 group of 5 is 5, 2 groups of 5 is 10, 3 groups of 5 is 15. So 3 times 5 is 15. It's the same exact thing when we do 5 times 1 eighth, for example. 1 group of 1 eighth is 1 eighth. If I have 2 1 eighths, I have 2 and 1 eighth. If I have 3 1 eighths, it's 3 and 1 eighth. I have 4 1 eighths, that means I have 4 1 up. Uh, Four groups of one eighth, then I have four one eighths. And if I have five groups of one eighth, then I have five one eighths. So that's what we're going to put over here. Five eighths. I have five groups of eighths. Right? Think about this. If you have five chips that are each one eighth, you would have five eighths. Okay? Same thing over here. If you have two groups of three sevenths, then Okay, one group of three sevenths is three sevenths. Another group of three sevenths is six sevenths. Ooh. Right? One group of three sevenths is three sevenths. Two groups of three sevenths, three plus three, six. Denominator doesn't change, seven. All right, same thing over here. One group of two fifths is two fifths. But if I have four groups of two fifths, my four times two is eight. And then my denominator is not going to change. And really, if you think about it, this 4 is over a 1. 4 divided by 1 is 4. 4 is a whole number. 4 times 2 is 8. 1 times 5 is 5. You see, unlike when we add or subtract fractions, our denominators do not need to be the same when we're multiplying. Multiplication of fractions is very simple. You just multiply the numerators, and then you didn't multiply the denominators. 4 times 2 is 8. 1 times 5 is 5. All whole numbers are over 1 because when you do 3 divided by 1 or 5 divided by 1 or any number divided by 1, you get that whole number. Okay, so these are all over 1. And again, numerators you multiply across, denominators you multiply across. They don't need to be the same. Finally, over here, it wants you to just rewrite or rename fractions and mixed numbers. Okay, for example, here I have 1 and a half. That means I have 1 times 2 plus 1. 1 times 2 is 2 plus 1. That means I have 3 over 2. Okay? I have 1 whole, two, one whole, which is 2 over 2, right? I can rewrite this as 2 over 2. And then I can add them. 2 plus 1 is 3. The denominators don't change. Same thing over here. I have 2 times 4. Okay, I'm going to do my whole number times 4 because that's how many groups of fourths I have. By representing this 2, there's 2 groups of fourths. So I can do 2 times 4 plus my numerator. 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9. And then denominator stays the same. Okay, another way that I can you can think of it is, okay, this 2 here represents 4. So my denominator is 4. Because it's not 1, I'm going to double it. I'm going to take that num this whole number and we'll double it by my denominator. So it would be 8. And again, 8 plus that 1 is 9. 4 plus 4, denominator doesn't change. Okay? So again, to remember it is you multiply the denominator by the whole number and then you add the numerator. Okay? Over here on the bottom, let me scroll down. Now you're doing the opposite. Okay, let me get my writing tool. The opposite is being done over here. You have to ask yourself, how many times does 8 go into 9? Hmm, 8 goes into 9 one whole time. I would have 1 left over out of denominator 8. Okay, let's do it again over here. 3 goes into 7 two times. Right, 2 times 3 is 6, which means I would have 1 left over out of 3. And then you would do the same to 19 and 20. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn the page. We are not going to do a spark your learning. So we're going to jump over here to page 102. Make sure I'm following along because I can't see the page numbers on the screen. Yeah, we're on page 102. So over here it says, after the concert, the Cat Quartet invites... Let me make this one page. So the Cat Quartets invite another group. Okay? The Cat Quartet invites their friends to a party. Of the total number of cats shown, one out of six of the cats, or one-sixth of the cats, have striped tails. How many cats have striped tails? Okay? And then it says over here as part of my goal, draw a visual model to show how you can find the number of cats that have striped tails. So I'm going to get my tool. Okay? I am going to go ahead and start making groups of six. Okay? Um, the amount of cats that there are, I'm going to have to count the pictures. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'm going to put these 12 cats into two into groups of six, okay? So that means in each group, there's going to be two cats. So this is one group. This is another group. Okay? The reason I'm cutting them up into groups of six is because my denominator is six. So I am told that there are six different groups here. And I know that there's two in each group because there are 12 cats. <coughs> so that's eight so far. Okay, cats, ten cats, and let's do another group over here. Okay, so twelve cats. Okay, there are six groups one, two, three, four, five, six groups, and there are twelve cats, two in each group. Okay, so I drew a visual model to show how you how of the cats. My key information is that there's one six of them have striped tails. Okay? So now I have to show that one six, so one of these six groups have striped tails. So I'm just going to pick the first two. Okay? So now this group of cats has stripes. These do not have stripes. Okay? The way I was able to do that was because I said, okay, of these six groups, only one of them has striped tails, just like my information told me. There's six groups, that's what my denominator says. Only one of the groups has striped tails, okay? So now part A says, how does the unit fraction one six represented in your visual model? Well, it's represented because I arranged the cats into six equal groups and one six is represented by one of the six groups being shaded in, okay? So I have six groups. Okay, I'm just going to shorthand it. And one of the six groups Is shaded in. Okay, so how can you use your vision model to find the number of cats that have striped tails? Well, I can just count how many circles are in one of my six groups. So in this group of the six groups, I have two, right? So I can just count. Count. Number in each group. Okay, so how many cats have striped tails? Two cats. Okay, remember that label. And I know it's two cats because I shaded in two and it only wanted one of the six groups. Okay, so on the next page, when you guys go ahead and turn over, it's very similar to what we just dealt with. It says four more cats have joined the party, okay? So before I had 12 cats, now I have 16 cats. Of the cats shown, three-fourths have colored tails. So how many have solid color, um, have solid colored tails, okay? So now this, what you should be doing is putting them into groups of four, okay? So you would have four different groups. 
And then in each of these groups, three of the four, you're going to go ahead and shade in. And that is going to represent the group of cats with colored tails. Okay, and then you're going to answer the questions up on this page um, as they follow. Then you're going to complete the check your understanding to see how can you apply the steps that I just showed you on the page before and these questions. So here it says, how many equal size groups did you draw? How many equal size groups did we draw and why? How many cats are represented in each of these groups? So how many cats are in each of the groups? And how many of these groups represent the cats with solid colors? How do you know? And then finally, give them the answer. How many cats do have solid colored tails? And do not forget your label. And then finally, at 9 o'clock, 5 eighths of the 16 cats at a party go home. Okay? So 5 out of these eights go home. How many cats go home at 9 o'clock? Draw a visual model to find the answer. So you're going to, again, draw a visual model. Again, hint, you're going to have a group of eight. Okay? And there's 16 total cats. So you're going to have eight different groups. And you're going to keep putting in cats equally into groups until you have 16 drawn out. So that, again, tells you that there's two cats in each group. Okay? If you have any questions, boys and girls, as always, please comment below. And I will see you today at 1 p.m. at our Webex. Thank you.